in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this Mass. Welcome especially uh, to those who are here this morning. It's a great joy uh, that once again we can uh, begin at least to gather and to celebrate the Mass together and welcome also to all those who will be joining us, are joining us uh, virtually. We are together, we are one family, we are in the presence of God. And uh, I'd like to uh, very briefly uh, introduce, uh, first of all, the new assistant priest at the cathedral, uh, that is Father Raphael Schweder, Raph, Father Raph Schweder, I don't know if he can be filmed there, but uh, there he is, and he will be uh, a presence here in the cathedral, both for the English-speaking congregation and for the Polish congregation. He's a man of large heart, so we welcome to you, and we welcome also uh, his first Sunday Mass as a deacon at Malachi Eze, who will be proclaiming the gospel for the first time at a Sunday Mass. So uh, he was ordained on Thursday with Christopher Doy, so we welcome him warmly as well. Let us now come into the presence of God and acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, we have sinned. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
a reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God other than you who cares for everything, to whom you might have to prove that you never judged unjustly. Your justice has its source and strength. Your sovereignty over all makes you lenient to all. You show your strength when your sovereign power is questioned, and you expose the insolence of You govern us with great lenience, for you have only to will, and your power is there. By acting thus, you have taught a lesson to your people how the virtuous man must be kindly to his fellow men. And you have given your sons the good hope that after sin you will grant repentance. The Word of the Lord. O oh Lord, you are good and forgiving. O oh Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give heed, O oh Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my voice. All the nations shall come to adore you and glorify your name, O oh Lord, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. But you, God of mercy and compassion, slow to anger, O Lord, abounding in love and truth, turn and take pity on me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness, for when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means, and that the pleas of the saints expressed by the Spirit are according to the mind of God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put a parable before the crowd. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sold good seed in his field. Why he why everybody was asleep, his enemy came, sowed Daniel all among the wheat and made off. When the new wheat sprouted and, rip and ripened, the Daniel appeared as well. The owner's servants went to him and said, Sir, was it no good seed that you sowed in your field? If so, where does the Dane come from? Some enemy has done this, he answered. And the servant said, Do you want us to go and weed it out? But he said, No, because when you weed out the Dane, you might pull up the wheat with it. Let them both grow till the harvest. And at harvest time, I shall say to the reapers, first collect the dana and tie it in bundles to be burnt. Then gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, the sermon really will be brief today, but it's good uh, to be back, at least uh, the beginning of a movement in that direction. And even with the restrictions, uh, many people have missed the Blessed Sacrament acutely, uh, and any committed Catholic surely will have missed receiving the body of Christ sacramentally. And conversely, we priests who... Uh, have still been able to offer the holy sacrifice and receive communion, uh, we have missed you. We, we have missed our people, the mystical body of Christ. So now at last, these empty glasses can begin to be filled. Well, I'm, I'm moved today to, to think, in, given the context in which we are, uh, to think of our faith. It is to pick up the gospel. It is the, the, the wheat, the good wheat that has been sown in our hearts or in the other parables that we didn't hear, but the mustard seed uh, sown in the field and the leaven that the woman puts in the dough. We have been called to believe in Christ and belong to the church. We've been called by God. It's a grace of God. It's a vocation from him. And it enriches our lives, enriches, please God, our eternity immeasurably. So I'd, I'd just like to think that the experience we've been going through and still are has not just been a deprivation, but has helped us to cherish our faith and help us see what a gift it is. And this kind of metaphor struck me, but our life is made of different spaces, is it not? And faith can fill them all. It turns 
the spaces where we live our lives from gray and drab into something alive and colorful, not free from difficulties, of course, but with this added dimension. It answers so well our faith to the different spaces we inhabit. It's the key that fits the subtle, complex lock of our humanity. Now, first of all, it fills the space that each of us is, body and soul. It is a very personal thing. Faith is between me and God. It fills the space of my individuality, my solitude. St. John Henry Newman once wrote, it is face to face, alone with the alone, in all matters between man and his God. He's talking about life in the church. He alone creates. He alone has redeemed. Before his eyes we go in death. In the vision of him is our eternal solitude. Myself and my creator, myself and my redeemer. Faith is the key that fits the lock of myself and fills that empty space. Now, a second space, and it's a word we, we've heard a lot recently, is the household. Most of us live in households of some kind, weird and wonderful sometimes, but two or three or four or more. And this is another space for faith to fill. I'd like to think that during this time, our sense of that has grown and that our homes have become places for the word of God, homes for the word of God, homes for prayer, homes for what we quaintly call the domestic virtues, the virtues that help us live closely together with other people. Faith can fill that space too. And thirdly, there's church being together for prayer. This is what we've lacked or had only virtually till recently. But church and faith go together like Mary and Jesus. They're not to be separated. We're not just members of a table tennis club or coming people who come together now and then for the martial arts. We are social beings. <clears throat> We're physical, be <coughs> excuse me, physical, local, sacramental, body as well as soul, needing each other as well as being ourselves. We're called to be part of God's regathering of scattered humanity, called to be part, therefore, of the universal church spread throughout the world, part of a local church because it exists here and now in this place, in a diocese, and part of a parish, a congregation, an assembly that gathers for liturgy in a building called a church because it houses the, the, the sorry, the building is called a church because it houses the church ourselves. Is that not so? Famous line from Shakespeare, this above all, to thine own self be true. Well, we can apply that to ourselves as Christians, to the church. The body of Christ comes together to celebrate it, what makes it a body. The, the body of Christ offered, received, and lived in the Holy Eucharist. The virtual is good. It has been very helpful. It's still going to be needed, but it's, it is an extension. It's not a replacement. Why go to church? The short answer is the body of Christ in all its meanings. And this so answers to what we are as well. It's a wonderful thing, the way God, through the word made flesh, has really entered into our humanity and speaks to it. I have to stop 
But isn't there a wider space still, the wider space of the whole world? Our faith is meant to fill that too, to be offered to everyone. And here in this parish, great efforts, Father Keith speaks of them Sunday after Sunday, are made to make that possible, to get that going. The faith is wheat, it is a mustard seed, it is yeast. May it fill all the fields and all the dough of our lives. Let us stand now for the intercessions. We have come away to be present to our Saviour in worship, physically or virtually. In prayer, we offer our petitions to the Father. For the ministry of the Church, that she may ever be conformed to the mind of God and so be a living sign and channel of, of the mercy and compassion of God, which knows no bounds. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a, renewal, a renewed vitality in our prayer and trust in God, that the Spirit of God may dwell within us, refreshing, restoring, and transforming our relationship with the Blessed Trinity. Lord, hear us. For the sick within our community and in our hospitals, that the God of peace and healing may turn, take pity, and touch them in their pain. Lord, hear us. For all who have died, that purified by the saving love of God, that they may be gathered safely into God's burn. Lord, hear us. For all our personal intentions, we pray in silence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, guide us on the right path and give us courage to face the challenges of life through Christ our Lord. We don't have an offertory procession, but for those gathered here, you'll be able to leave an offering as you leave the church. And for those who are watching uh, online, at the bottom of your screens, there are instructions on how you could, if you wish, contribute to the parish and its mission uh, electronically. So you can donate electronically or by standing order or by telephone. Thank you. We're most grateful.
we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace by bowing to each other. And those of you who are online, if you're in company, please show each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have and Saboria.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We come to the moment of our communion and you're asked please to remain in your pews and a minister will come to you. The bishop will hold up the host once and we all respond Amen and when you're offered it individually you make no response. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, please be seated a moment. Uh, Father Rapp, I think, has something to say. Or Deacon Tony. About. The only announcements I can think of are that Mass continues at 12.30 every day and at 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, 6 o'clock in the evening. They will all be live streamed as from this week, as far as I know. I think those are the only announcements. I'm new, you have to forgive me. Uh, so we are open for masses, like Deacon Tony said, three masses a day in the morning, uh, lunchtime and evening. You can book your place in the church on our website. Please do so. Uh, we understand that it might be difficult to get to Sunday Mass, but um, you can come during the week. Uh, we have put a new Mass during the lunchtime, so you're very welcome to join us for Mass. Please book it online beforehand. And just to add to that, that um, so far our weekday masses haven't been full, so you can take a chance and come and inscribe and just come in uh, just before mass begins, about 15 minutes before. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother, Mother of, of Mercy. Hail, Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. <laughs> 